Hey everybody, what's going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video for y'all. So today we're going to be taking another look at Branded Despia, uh, which is a deck I've been working on a little bit over the last season, pretty much ever since Alibur got semi-limited. I uh, was experimenting around with a build that used uh, Allure of Darkness to try to kind of make up for the lack of consistency um, with Alibur going to two. That said, after, you know, testing throughout pretty much the whole last season, intermittently, not like, you know, obviously Branded Despia wasn't the only deck I played, but I did ultimately find while playing the deck that Allure, it's not bad by any means, but honestly, it's not super great. I'm not a huge fan of it uh, as a means to um, promote consistency, at least not in the builds that I was trying it in. Uh, granted, if I had maybe tried it a little bit more, 3 Tragedy and or 3 Edge of Chain, that might have been better. And I did test that build for a little bit, but honestly, it really wasn't working out super great. So I decided to ultimately just cut the allures altogether um, and kind of go back to a little bit closer to what I was playing before with the uh, Branded Lost and Tri-Brigade Mercurier. Honestly, I feel like the deck, while it is a little, a little bit less consistent now, um, I don't think it's taken such a huge hit that we necessarily, like, need to have the Allures in here, or a spring -ins kit, or something to make up for the loss of the third Alibur. Um, I've talked about this before, but um, one thing that I've kind of noticed, not just in my time playing Master Duel, Master Duel, but my time playing the TCG as well, is that sometimes when an engine or a searcher piece gets hit, um, you know, not like very hard, but if a card like Alibur goes from 3 to 2, or if it goes to like 1, for example, uh, sometimes people will try to like, you know, compensate by directly making up for like what that card, what they lost in that one card, right? So, uh, you know, when Alibur got hit to 2, people were looking for more ways to either search Brain and Despia or draw more cards with a lure or something like that, but that's not always necessary. Uh, when it comes to making those deck changes. Sometimes you can actually kind of hamper the overall effectiveness of your deck, just trying to make up for uh, the, you know, slight power hit in, like, one department. Uh, in this case, it was the consistency department, which, you know, even without allures, I feel like we can get to branded fusion in our plays, like, still relatively easily enough. So, yeah, ultimately decided that maybe it's not best for us to be playing at least three allure. I can see two allure maybe being correct, uh, over Braid Lost and Tri Brigade Mercurier, but um, I don't know. I figure at that point it's like it kind of comes down to like deck building and preference and all that kind of fun stuff. So let's see. We still are, ro still are rocking Fairy Tale Snow in the deck. I've had some people before ask what this card is for. Uh, so the idea is that this is our light monster that we're gonna use to make Albion when we need to make Albion. Um, we have the Fairy Tale Snow, which I really like having this card in general. Um, in this deck because it's not only a good light target, of course, but uh, if your opponent is trying to negate, like, your Lubellion or your Alibur or something, uh, and you have your Fairy Tail Snow in the graveyard, you can banish it as part of the cost for Fairy Tail Snow, uh, and then if it was, like, Effect Veiler or Imperm or another card that targets and then negates, then that effect will fizzle and the, uh, the card will resolve thanks to Fairy Tail Snow. You can also use Fairy Tail Snow to, like, Flip your opponent's stuff down on their turn as a disruption tool. You can use it to help OTK. It has a lot of applications in this deck. Um, they're all a bit niche. Like you don't need a copy of Fairy Tale Snow, but I definitely like having one around. As far as the extra deck goes, like I'm still trying out the Ver Anaconda, but I also haven't really made it honestly, like at all. Um, I'm thinking about just dropping it and putting the Titanic Clad back in the extra deck. Uh, the Titanic Clad I didn't make very often, but. Um, it was nice to have the easy OTK option with, you know, Albion into Titanoclad, plus, like, you know, a random Alibur. That's, like, 8,000 damage relatively easily there, so, um, you know, it's not like I've needed that option to win games yet, but I also haven't really needed the Ver Anaconda yet, so, yeah, this last extra deck spot has been kind of a toss-up between uh, the Ver Anaconda and Titanoclad the Ash Dragon. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm thinking about putting Titanic Clad back in just because I haven't used Vert yet. As far as the rest of the build, it's pretty it's pretty standard. I actually was thinking about cutting one of these Imperms and playing two Valors, like two Valor, one Imperm, which I don't normally do in most decks. And most of the time, I like one Valor and two Imperm because two Imperm has a little bit more flexibility in when it can be used as opposed to Effect Valor. But I will say the thing that I like about Effect Valor in this deck in particular is that if you draw it off of Guardian Chimera on your opponent's turn, it's much better to have in your hand uh, than Infinite Impermanence. So that is worth considering. Also, being a light monster makes it uh, eligible to be fused with, which obviously you can't fuse with Infinite Impermanence. So, 
As far as how I feel about Branded Despia as, like, in terms of its place in the meta, I don't know. I do still feel like it's on the lower end of Tier 1 as opposed to the upper end of Tier 2, personally. That's my opinion. Um, but, I mean, if we look at the statistics and as far as, like, how much it's being played and its placement on, like, just ladder and in tournaments, um, you know, we're seeing it more represented at Tier 2 levels. So, I don't know. I, f I feel like you could make you could make an honest debate either way. Like, I'm not saying you're wrong if you think Branded Despia is Tier 2. I'm not saying that at all. Um, I think that's actually, there's a decent chance that's correct, to be quite honest. It's just, I personally think power level-wise, it is still a little bit above other Tier 2 decks. Like, I'm thinking, like, Sky Striker, Runic, Flunderies. Uh, I think Braided Despi is still, like, at least a half step above it. I've said this before, but I don't, I don't like, you know, Tier 1.5 or 2.5. I think that's too messy. But if I were going to have a Tier 1.5, Branded Despia would be that deck, so... For whatever that's worth. Let's see, as far as overall changes, as I mentioned, we dropped the allures in their place. We have a branded loss, a tri brigade mercurier, and I believe we threw in an extra copy of impermanence. I think we were on one imperm, one veiler before, and now we are on uh, two imperm, one veiler. And I believe those are about the only changes I've really made to the deck here. Um, yeah, I don't know. As far as everything else goes, I'm still liking all these ratios. The one thing I would like to include is like a third edge of chain. Um, I don't know, the, the Fright for Patrick engine is really interesting to me, um, because I find myself wanting, I find myself, actually, it's more apt to say, I find myself, um, not being able to use the second copy of Fright for Patrick, really, usually ever. <laughs> it's like the stars aligned if that happens, because, you know, uh, usually you've drawn one of your Edge of Chains or Polymerizations by then. In a perfect world, I'd love to be able to play both three Edge of Chain and three Poly, and honestly, three Fright for a Patchwork, like, I think three of each of these cards would be great. We just don't have the room, like, at all, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I think that's about everything I wanted to cover as far as the build itself goes. So let's go ahead and break it down card by card, and then we'll take a look at some games. We're playing one Effect Veiler, two Despian Tragedy, three Max C, three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, two Edge of Chain, one Fairy Tale Snow, two Fallen of Albaz, two Alibur, the Jester of Despia, one Tri Brigade Mercurier, one Ad Libitum of Despia, one Nibir the Primal Being, two Polymerization, one Foolish Burial, one Fright for, sorry, two Fright for Patchwork, three Branded Fusion, one Branded Lost, two Super Polymerization, two Called by the Grave, one Cross Out Designator, two Branded Opening, two Branded in Red, two Infinite Permits, and then finally one Branded Banishment. It's gonna round up the main deck. Extra deck will be one Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, one Predaplant Drago Stapelia, two Albion the Branded Dragon, one Despian Coratus, two Masquerade the Blazing Dragon, two Mirror Jade the Ice Blade Dragon, uh, I'm sorry, I skipped two Lubellian the Searing Dragon, one Alba Lanatus the Abyss Dragon, two Guardian Chimera, and then finally one Predaplant Vert Anaconda. And that's going to round out the deck. Now let's take a look at some gameplay. So for our first game, we're going to be up against Sky Striker. And if I recall correctly, I think my opponent actually won the coin flip and opted to go first. Um, which indicates to me that they are the Therion Sky Striker build. Uh, basically, if you're playing against, like, you know, Sky Striker and they choose to go first, I would I would assume they're on Therion Regulus. Um, but if they are going second, I would assume that they are a more, like, quote-unquote pure OTK kind of build. So, uh, our hand's looking pretty good. Uh, well, I mean, except for the fact that we have only Imperm against them. Uh, Imperm is like, it's alright against Sky Striker, it's, it's kind of meh. Uh, it's really on turn one usually only going to be good for negating their Shizuku, but the rest of our hand is looking fantastic here with the Patchwork and the Branded Fusion, and then these two monsters, of course. A Polymerization would be a pretty good draw, honestly. So at first I was a bit confused as to like, you know, what my opponent was doing here. I was like, wait, why'd you summon Rose? And then they link Ray into uh, Hayate. Or no, no, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of a totally different game, that's my bad. So anyway, uh, yeah, they're going to go for the Shizuku. I'll just throw out the Emperm against it. Um, not really sure why they set with this Rose. Yeah, I'm thinking of a different game that might have even been with a different tech, to be honest. Uh, I'm thinking of a different game where my opponent went for, like, Rei into Hayate on their turn one. I was confused when they went Hayate into Shizuku, special the Theron Regulus, and equipped the Hayate. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. They're keeping the Rei in the graveyard. This here, I have no idea why my opponent threw out a Rose on turn one. That's not really going to do anything. And really, we'll, might in, even in the future keep them from like resolving 
um, Sky Striker spells, but... Uh, either way, I'm going to start off with the fight for Patrick, of course, want to bait out that Ash Blossom. Um, I already have the Fallen of Albaz in hand, so I'm just going to run out this Brain Diffusion. It is going to get Ash Blossoms, but I was like, you know... I kind of debated maybe trying to use Polly with Despian Tragedy to, like, bait out the Ash Blossom, but I was like, I don't really feel like I need to do that, honestly. I will say, it was it was actually still right to do the Polymerization first anyway, uh, to make the Masquerade, because, you know, if they had the Ash Blossom, this would have been an extra 600 damage to them, which might not seem super relevant, but if I don't finish them off on this turn, then every 600 points is going to count, because it's going to be uh, one less effect they can activate under Masquerade, so it does actually matter. But yeah, now that they only have one card left in hand, I'm, you know, reasonably confident it's not like a Veiler or something. I'm just gonna throw out this Albaz, uh, use their Shizuku to go into Mirror Jade. Now my plan here is to basically just try to get rid of this Ray. Um, so, this might look really weird that my opponent just let the attack go through, and I honestly kind of agree it is. I don't know why my opponent didn't go for Kaina, but um, I will say during the actual game, my opponent, like... They thought for like a solid minute when I declared this attack of Masquerade onto Ray there. Um, I was pretty sure they were going to activate Ray's effect and go into Kaina, the Earth Sky Striker, and prevent probably like Mirror Jade from attacking. Um, but they ultimately decided not to. Um, oh, and, and for those wondering why I didn't just use Mirror Jade to banish Ray, it's because Ray, of course, has the quick effect. Now, to be fair, I could just banish the Kaina. Actually, I didn't think about that until just now. I could have just banished, I could have activated Mirror Jade anyway on Ray. Well, it doesn't even target, so just activate Mirror Jade. If they use Ray in response to bring out Kaina, I'd banish Kaina, and because it's not on the field at the resolution of the chain leak, it actually wouldn't stop my Mirror Jade from attacking. So, I actually should have used the Mirror Jade effect. I would have, you know, at best banished the Ray, at worst banished the Kaina, and the Ray still wouldn't be able to come back, so. But, I mean, regardless, my opponent just kind of let the attack go through anyway, so. Um, it ultimately didn't end up mattering, like, too, too much here. So yeah, we didn't like finish the opponent off on this turn, but you know, they're on two cards in hand plus the multi roll. I've got a face down branded in red, and my opponent's just gonna pass. I was just about to say, like, even if the cards are gonna be useful to my opponent there, um, I still have the ability to just completely disrupt them and actually send their whole board uh, by using both the Masquerade and the Mirror Jade. I can destroy up to two cards on the field. So there is that duel there against Sky Striker. Now let's go and take a look at the next one. And this time around, we find ourselves against Sword Soul Tenyi. It's definitely a matchup we've played quite a bit, Brandon Espion versus Sword Soul Tenyi. I was hoping to play against more Math Mechs. I somehow did not run into like hardly any Math Mechs during this uh, particular play session, but I was really hoping to to get that matchup in just to I don't know see how I feel about it. I haven't I haven't played against Math Mech as Brandon Despia as much as I would like yet, but. Gonna lead with the branded fusion, it resolves, but even if it, you know, even if my opponent had a response, I have both call by and cross out here, so, uh, you know, we are definitely good in the response department. Of course, gonna grab the ad libitum and then use Lubellion to go into the mirror jade. Now, I am at, actually, excuse me, this is gonna look really weird, but I am actually gonna normal some of this Albaz and banish it with the mirror jade, and that is actually pretty important to do because otherwise I don't have access to Brains in Red and then I can't get to Guardian Chimera. This is actually something I've noticed quite a bit. Like, even playing in like Diamond, in like Upper Diamond and Diamond 1, like I'll still run across Braided Despia players who like will summon Alibur, make a Mirror Jade, and then just pass. And then they don't have Brains in Red. Like they just don't, like, you definitely need to be banishing your own Alibur with the Mirror Jade. Um, the vast majority of the time, that is the correct play, because it's going to set up the Branded in Red. Uh, this is also assuming that you added Ad Libitum of Despia with Tragedy. Uh, that sets up Branded in Red to make the Guardian Chimera, and if you're worried about, you know, quote-unquote, wasting your Mirror Jade, you don't, because you actually send the Mirror Jade as a material, bring it back with Ad Libitum, and then you're able to use the Mirror Jade effect again. I feel like somehow people who are playing this deck still don't understand that all the time, but, uh... Yeah, it's just, I, I see that, that misplay a lot. Um, again, it's actually not a misplay if you do already have the Branded in red. Well, actually, it kind of is, because then you could still set up Branded Banishment. Uh, or you could add a Branded, you know, Fusion to your hand. I think all those things are better than having just, like, a random Alibur on board. But I guess there are situations where maybe you want the Alibur on board so it can come back with its own effect. But that's that's a very, 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 very niche case, IMO. So... 
Yeah, I'm gonna use the Guardian Chimera like as soon as the Moye gets summoned. As far as what I was gonna pop here, I actually debated on this for a while because it really, it really depends, right? If I think they have Long Yan, then it's probably better to just pop the Moye. But if I think they have Shithana, um, then it's better to pop the Sword Soul token. But the Sword Soul token is also not bad if they have most Tendi monsters. Like if they have Ashina, then they can use that to go into. Um, the Shathana as well for the level 8 Synchro. Um, I guess to be fair, if they had Vishuda and Adhara, they wouldn't be able to make Link plays, but they could still bounce my cards with the Vishuda. So I ultimately decided that the Sword Soul token was like a slightly bigger threat because I thought it was more likely that they had a Temi card to go with it as opposed to exactly Long Yan plus another um, Sword Soul for Moye. And also one of the reasons that I you know suspected this is because my opponent Activated Emergence, searched a Taya, and then revealed the Taya with the Moye. Uh, that to me kind of indicates that they more than likely don't have another like Sword Soul or Tenny monster in hand, um, or at the very least that they don't have a Long Yan because um, you know I figured that they would probably have used it, so or they probably would have revealed it or and not searched. I don't really know why the Emergence for Taya in general. Now that I think about it. I mean, I guess they... Well, no, because even if you need something to reveal, you can just reveal the emergence itself. Like, why wouldn't you just wait and see how the turn plays out? I don't know, but anyway. Uh, I'm going to summon Alibur. Uh, opponent's got an Imperm. That's fine. I guess I cross it out. <laughs> I was going to say that's fine because I have Lethal on board. I really should have let that Imperm resolve, actually. I should not have used cross that on it, but... Uh, the opponent's just going to concede anyway, but... Literally, literally once Alibur was summoned, I could have just turned Mirror Jade and Guardian Chimera to attack mode and just swung for lethal, so... Um, yeah, like I said, I should have negated that, but... It's not really that big of a deal. We had it either way, so... Uh, there's that duel. Let's go and take a look at the next one now. Alright, so this time we're playing against Runic. <gasps> I know. Um, this is the Floodgate variant. They're also using a pretty interesting tech in Paradox Fusion. Uh, it's an Omni Negate a counter trap that works by banishing a fusion monster you control for two turns comes back during the next standby phase in attack mode so i thought that was pretty interesting but uh anyway looking at our opening hand even though we got to go first it's pretty garbage uh, i mean i don't know it's not like garbage like maxi ash blossom and imperm are three very good cards to have but this is very much a going second hand when we went first so not that great we don't have any actual live plays um, but honestly, this might have turned out for the better because, like, you notice my opponent's on Runic. I mean, no, to be fair, it would have been better to set up against Runic than not, but, um, you know, when you're playing against Runic and you don't have hardly any cards on your field, that really limits, like, what all Runic spells they can use, so. Yeah, here, unfortunately, due to the Amano Iwato, I wasn't able to activate Ash Blossom or C at any point during that turn. I considered using Imperm on Amato so I could... Uh, get off the Ash Blossom, but, you know, the thing is, I didn't really have a way to deal with Amano Iwato then on my turn following up. Uh, there have been times in the past where I'm like, yeah, just imperm the Amano Iwato, it's fine. But that's really because we had an out to it, right? In the other situations where I've done that. In this situation, like, nah, I, I, I really wanted to throw out these responses during my opponent's turn, yes, but unfortunately I just really wasn't able to do it without sacrificing plays on my turn, so... I'm just gonna let my opponent do their thing and top deck this Alibur. <laughs> so my opponent flips up there can only be one, but but we're actually playing like the one deck this format where there can only be one really doesn't do anything at all. So this is actually something I did want to talk about as far as Brandon Despia goes and a a slight advantage to running it in this particular meta. We're starting to see in this meta, of course, you know, a lot of there can only be ones because there's a decent amount of runics out there, right? Um, but on top of that, we're also seeing um, plays or cards like uh, Nibiru get played more often because, you know, Math Mech and Sword Soul are starting to see a lot more popularity and those decks are super hampered by Nibiru. Um, so, you know, Nibiru and Maxi are a lot more used and effective in this format. But these cards are actually not particularly good against Brandon Despia. Um, I've talked about this before. It's actually why a lot of people weren't playing Nibiru for the longest time is because uh, you know, Brandon Despia does its plays in under five summons, so Nibiru doesn't do anything. So in that regard, if you're running into a lot of Runics and Nibirus in um, your games, then it might not be a bad idea to switch over to Brandon Despia. Because uh, again, 
those cards really don't do anything to this. Like, there can only be one. I have OTK'd multiple times under it. Like, there's really not a whole lot that that card does to stop us as the Braided Despia player. But to be fair, I don't, I don't know. I don't really find Runic to be too much of a threat. I mean, you've noticed in a lot of my more recent deck lists, I've kind of stopped going out of my way to play even Harpy's Feather Duster, because I'm like, I don't know. I almost kind of shrug when I think about the Runic matchup, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm just like, eh, I don't know. They flip Floodgates sometimes. That's a little annoying occasionally, but sometimes you play through it anyway, so it doesn't usually matter, or it doesn't really matter. I would even argue it doesn't usually matter, because, like, the Floodgates are really only good if... Only at their best, I'll say it this way. They're only at their best if, uh, you know, the opponent goes first. So, if you treat the coin flip as a 50-50, which you should objectively, uh, then, you know, your opponent's already only got a 50-50 chance to open super great, and that's if they open with, like, multiple Floodgates and the, the Quick Bite spell and the, the Fountain, you know? It's like, eh. that doesn't happen most of the time. Not in my experience, and not statistically, honestly, so... Oh, I thought this was kind of cute that the opponent dropped a Mono Iwato here. I, I think that they thought that the Masquerade was an activated effect, but um, it's actually not. Masquerade is not an activated effect. Uh, it is a continuous effect that applies a cost to your opponent's cards. So, uh, a Mono Iwato can only stop monsters from activating their effects. So, does not actually do anything against Masquerade. A lot of people treat this card as just like skill drain in the form of a spirit monster, but... Um, there are those important differences to note. So, uh, now that the opponent's played Card of Demise, they can no longer play any more cards this turn, which has secured my victory here. So, yeah, GG's against Runic there. We've got one more duel to take a look at. Let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. And our final opponent for this video is going to be another Brandon Despia player, who I was looking at their list, and it was kind of like the opposite of what I was talking about in the profile, and I didn't even intend this, I just happened to be looking at their list just now, but they're playing three Springin's Kit. That's like in addition to two Alibird, and I'm just like, that's, that's, that's a bit too much in my opinion, but... Oh, they're playing Allurus too, yeah. This person was definitely going all in on trying to make up for the uh, consistency drop here, so... Yeah, you might have noticed I'm still holding the Ash Blossom, uh, even though I, my opponent has resolved Allure and, excuse me, Despian Tragedy. And all these other cards that search too. Yeah, at this point, I'm just going to hold Ash Blossom for Branded Fusion. Like, I typically do that anyway when playing against Branded Despia. Like, it does very much depend on the situation, but turn one, I'll pretty much hold Ash Blossom for Branded Fusion, like, every single time. Because I feel like, if you notice, like, literally every effect my opponent played was one that could possibly trigger Ash Blossom. Like, it just really felt like they were beating me for it. Um, and it's funny, because, of course, I was on auto, so my opponent was getting prompts to respond. But, funnily enough, because every single thing they did search, like, I could still reasonably have been holding Max C. Well, I guess not now, because obviously my opponent's special and stuff, but... Um, now, now, when they threw, activate the Brain of Fusion, like, now I'll throw out the Ash Blossom. That's the only thing I noticed, um, another way in which people misplay that I noticed anyway, is that when I'm playing Branded Despia, I noticed there are still people, again, in, in Diamond 1 and Upper Diamond, there are still people who will Ash Blossom the Alibur, and it's like, no, you should definitely be saving it for the Branded Fusion. Like, I feel like I Ash Blossomed Alibur, and then they activated Branded Fusion one time, and then I was like, oh yeah, so you just save it, so, I don't know. Uh, opponent's going to make a double masquerade set up here in addition to the dramaturge which is kind of interesting because they had i mean did they oh no because they i negated the brain diffusion so they didn't actually have a setup from your jade but right, right. Uh, but they did have the double poly which is pretty good for them so um yeah i think if you're not making a mirror jade turn one the double masquerade is and of course dramaturge on top of that definitely not a bad plan b i actually really would like to, a dramaturge in this deck and I've been thinking about just going out of my way to try to make room for one, but, um, I don't know, it'd probably involve cutting Lost and Mercurier for Dramaturge and something else. Um, but fortunately for me, I have a Super Poly, so, uh, my opponent's Double Masquerade really isn't gonna do too much to me here. I'm just gonna use those to go into Dragos to Pelia. Um, if I'm not gonna bait my opponent's Dramaturge here, then I'll just negate it either way, but I do, I do end up baiting the Dramaturge here.
The opponent's uh, Aliver is going to come back as well. I really don't know why the opponent activated Dramaturge's effect here, but that's fine with me. I mean, again, to be fair, if they would have just used Aliver, I would have just chained Dragostopelia on Dramaturge anyway, so... Although, I guess to be fair, then my opponent could negate the, dra the Dragostopelia then, and then it wouldn't get a counter. Not that it really matters, because it still would have used its effect by this point. Uh, it also doesn't really matter, because I'm honestly planning on just trying to end the duel on this turn. Uh, it might not look like it's going to be super easy for me to do that, but looks can definitely be deceiving here. Um, I'm just going to go for a Guardian Chimera using this Polymerization. And because I have Ad Libidum, I can just bring back the uh, Dragger Sepelia with the, um, the Ad Libidum that I just used. I also have another Poly and a Brandon Red still. And also, Dragon Sepelia, uh, if I recall correctly, is a soft once per turn, right? So I can, yeah, I can use this effect again if I need to. Not that I really think I will, but... Um, yeah, and then the fact that we drew Alibur off of Guardian Chimera is really just icing on the cake. I mean, at this point... Like I said, I was reasonably confident we could have found Lethal, but, like, having access to Alibur plus Braided Diffusion just, just cinches it very easily. Yeah, I can even throw out the Braided Banishment here, because I'm just, I'm not going to need it. Boom, there's the Mirror Jade, and then yeah, I'll throw out another Poly here. I'm just gonna get another Masquerade out. Because I figure even if I somehow don't have Lethal here, then I can just... You know, they'll be at so low life points, they're not gonna be able to use multiple effects anyway. And because this Masquerade effect is only once per turn, they actually can't get their other Masquerade out of their graveyard. And there we go. So there are those games. Now let's go ahead and move on to our outro. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the very end of the video like this. That means a whole lot to me, uh, not just personally, but it's also a great way of supporting the channel as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel in other means, uh, you can, of course, feel free to comment and or subscribe right here on YouTube. Uh, I'm always looking to the comments section. Uh, you guys leave some pretty awesome feedback uh, as far as like constructive criticism goes when it comes to deck building, gameplay, channel content, all that stuff. So feel free to leave your opinion down there. I will be sure to take a look at that there. Uh, and then subscribing is going to be the best way to get notifications of when these videos drop. That does happen every day, by the way. So if you're looking for daily Master Duel content, you've come to the right place. And there are more places where you can get some daily Master Duel content. If you check out the description below, follow the top link over to my Patreon page. Uh, there for just five bucks a month, which is as much as you pay for a booster pack. Uh, you'll find a lot more value than a pack full of filler over there. We've got some previews for content upcoming here on the channel. We've got some exclusive games uh, that are only posted over on Patreon over there. We've got some Q&As, and then you can also have your name featured in this lovely credit sequence where um, I thank all of the people who are uh, helping contribute over there on Patreon. Uh, it's a huge support to the channel, and it really means a lot as well. So thank you everyone who is donating uh, that is featured here on screen. And again, um, you know, it's not just a pure donation. You do get some more daily Master Duel content over there just for being a part of the Patreon. But I think that's about all the time that I have for today's video. Once again, I just want to thank you so, so very much for sticking all the way to the end of the video. Again, it just means a lot as I do um, put a decent amount of work into getting these videos out every single day. But that's about all the time that I've got for now. So without further ado, this is Hexlex. I'm signing out, and I hope you have a fantastic day.